and Executive Vice President of the National Rifle Association. A very good afternoon to the Honorable Judge, timekeepers, peers of your opponents, and the members of the floor. I'm Janet, the first speaker from the government team. The motion for today's debate is, this house would arm teachers. Before I proceed to our first point, allow me to define today's motion. Ladies and gentlemen, we, the government team, have defined only for particular teacher were permitted to carry non-lethal concealed weapons. First and foremost, I would like to highlight some keywords for my speech. As I just stated, our teacher is qualified teacher carrying non-lethal concealed weapon in school area. Moreover, non-lethal concealed weapon, as I stated, are weapons such as pepper spray, taser, and stun gun, which are keep hidden on one's person or under one's control. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's stop talking about today. Let's talk tomorrow and the future. What will happen to our children and our grandchildren? School shooting these days began to happen in a much higher frequency than it was in the earlier days. Therefore, our main teacher can act as a deterrence against criminal with guns. The rates of school shooting in part of North America are so high from the nationwide survey there are 67% of parents who were afraid to send their children to school. The result they produced after their survey was quite stunning because the number were way too high to be believed. The United States of America is at the top list in terms of school violence. This is very severe considering that the fact that schools are one of the safest places for children to grow. In this case, we cannot prevent criminals from getting guns. The only way to stop them is by arming teachers with carrying non lethal concealed weapons. <laughs> Criminals are attracted to areas where they won't face armed resistance. In a nutshell, mass shooting happen in school will be more likely and more deadly than a school where there are no armed teachers ready to take out them. Hence, it is undeniable that arming teacher in some particular school is able to protect the students as well as the teacher themselves. Apart from this, Teachers should be armed to protect the students because government gun control policies are ineffective. Teachers can act as a deterrent to a potential shooter and they can respond faster than anyone to save lives. School shooting can have devastating results in a matter of minutes. <coughs> Teachers can act as more quickly than law enforcement in the critical first few minutes to protect the students. Ladies and gentlemen, how many more innocent children need to die before we wake up and prepare our teacher to against it? It is time for others to follow and allow licensed teacher to carry non-lethal concealed weapons on school property. This is because we cannot afford to sit back any longer while students and teachers continue to be made and murdered by their peers or by a violent outsider. If we cannot disarm the attacker, we must arm the defender. Thank you.
So, now, America is the country who grants the right for every citizen in the country to carry guns to protect for self-protection. Because of that, America's crime rate is far more higher than comparing in a country like Malaysia who has not legalized the use of gun for an average citizen. The Geneva Declaration on Arms Violence and Development has released a study on the global crime rates and has proven that America has three times higher crime rates compared to Malaysia due to the legalization of firearms. And this statistic is under America's strict guns law. Next, ex opponent teams say that there are set a, there are qualified teachers to have have guns to protect their students. But can you ensure that teachers are always be, always may be correct in their action? In our country alone, it is normal for primary school teachers to use the cane and even wooden rods. There are also a lot of cases where the teachers brutally beat students with a cane to a point of serious injuries without a solid cause. Imagine what would happen to the student if the teacher was armed with a deadly handgun. If the teacher is able to beat his or her students cold bloodly without caring for their feelings, what is stopping that teacher from using the firearms provided to shoot the students? Care? Love? Yes, all those are important factors of teaching, but how can you prove the quality of this feeling that they won't harm the children? Although you argue that in sudden outbreak like mass shooting in, uh, in school, teacher will be able to protect the student with a firearm, but in reality, most people will hesitate to kill someone if they have never done it before, because, killing, because in their mind, Killing is always wrong. And even if they did manage to kill the criminal, they will have to continue to live the guilt of killing someone and this cause psychological problem in the future of the teacher. Do you really want to put such a burden on the teacher? Last, a teacher will have to hide the firearm so that students won't get their hands on it. So during a sudden outbreak, will the teacher be able to find the gun and react in the time to protect the student? And what if a student does get his hands on the weapon and hurt or even kills a fellow schoolmate? Who would then be responsible? Let's not try to cover the first hole by making a bigger one. Why create a dangerous new issue when, when it shouldn't be able? Thank you. Thank you. Um, then I invite the second speaker from the government team. Greetings everyone. To the judge, good afternoon. To our fellow opposition, to Sarah the timekeeper, our fellow audience and lecturers. Today, our motion is, the government, we, believe, we believe that our party, the government, that teachers should be armed because it will create more responsible teachers. But before I get into that point, let me start with the rebuttal. First of all, you talked about crime rate. Now this crime rate statistics don't necessarily mean, generally mean teachers, or even better, school shootings. This could probably mean gang fights on streets, rapists, serial killers. This not necessarily indicates teachers or school shootings. That's one. Second of all, impersonation, America having three times the crime rate. I agree with you that three times the crime rate, but in what cases? What's, what's even better is, if a teacher is willing to beat a student to the point with no reason and to hurt them or even break an arm, why are they even why are they even teachers? They do not deserve to be a teacher if they are willing to do this. One main important point we want to talk about is guns. We did not state guns. We are talking about non-lethal weapons. As stated by my first speaker, pepper spray, stun gun, and tasers. Yes. Now, you clearly speak about why would the teacher hit someone with a cane? Why would they injure someone? Why would they even become teachers? Sure, yes, those are all very valid points. But can you make sure every teacher in this country, every country, is a teacher that loves their students? 
can you make sure that with any weapons, they will not abuse it? You say about pepper spray and tasers. They can have the mentality of, this can't harm you, I can just use it on you. It's like a cane. By the way, I did a, I did a fast research. Did you know that a pepper spray and a taser has just 15 and 30 feet of range? Whereas a normal pistol has already 304 feet of range upon the bullet. So, you're going to stop someone that's entering your campus and starting to shoot someone with a little spray at near range. You just talk about fast response, speed action. When you have to walk close to the shooter and stop him immediately, I don't think so. Thank you. Well, a couple of things first. Even if, let's say, a perpetrator or someone with a gun comes in, wouldn't you rather have someone who can protect you whether it, we're not talking about guns here, even at close range, wouldn't you feel better compared to using your own hands to go and protect someone? This makes absolutely no sense. Better yet, it's better to go into a situation well armed or even armed in the minimalist of ways rather than going unarmed at all. Now, before I waste any more time, let me continue on to what I want to speak about. Now, Every day, our law enforcers, the police, who are trained in carrying arms, take care of us. So why? Why can't teachers do the same? Wouldn't responsible teachers be concerned for the safety of students? So why not empower them? Why not make them more responsible? Now, empowerment. By empowering teachers with non-lethal weapons, they will become more aware of their own role not only as an educator, but also as a caregiver and a protector. This also inspires confidence, gives authority, and gets teachers involved. Thus, the very famous saying, with great power comes great responsibility. Now, naturally, holding a non-lethal weapon would make a person more careful, because obviously you don't want to accidentally cause a manslaughter, or since we're not even implementing guns, we're using non-lethal weapons, we are stating that we don't want people to accidentally get pepper sprayed or tased. Now, as I continue, what I want to talk about mainly is what's happening around us. And also, I emphasize again, this is for the safety of the students. This brings me to my main point. We want specially selected teachers. We want this to be a legit thing. So. We should do what Utah has done, a state which has zero school shootings after certain cases. Now, Utah has implemented something that's very interesting. They have given training to teachers. These teachers are specially chosen by the teachers' council, the headmaster, to prove themselves and also to get them trained. Getting trained, what kind of tra training? First, they have to go through strict requirements such as no criminal records or better yet, no mental health issues, such as anger management. Procedures they have to go through is getting a licensing for the weapon. Now, there is a compulsory training period, a usage and safety usage of the concealed non-lethal weapon, safety regulation test. After that is a probational period, and then monthly checkups. This way, this ensures that teachers are effective, protective, and responsible. Then I emphasize again, we the government strongly believe that we should arm teachers. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Before I start my speech, I would like to rebut you, the second speaker. You said that teachers have the right to protect child, the right. Kenneth Trump, president of National School Safety and Security Service, has declared that it is short sight for those supporting the idea to believe that educators who enter a profession to teach and serve a supportive, neutral, green role with children could obliquely kick into a mindset to neutralize someone in a second of peace. Basically, if we want teachers to fulfill their roles as a successful ed educator, we have to allow them to focus on just that and leave security issues to another department. So, for the case now, students have been teach then and taught violence is totally wrong and unacceptable. With our teachers, students will be receive mixed message about what is right and wrong. 
This may lead up character behavior which has been brought on by confusion. Yes, students deserve to feel safe when they are trying to gain uh, an education, but at what cost? Certain individuals may even be afraid to do regular stuff like talk with friends or late for lessons because they feel threatened that they are, their teachers are armed. Kids will definitely be afraid. When violent force is upheld as safety, fear and silence creep in. So from anywhere and everywhere, less to say in school, the prison of gun has the capacity to silence the voice of civic, and that is the voice that helps children learn about what it means to live with one another and to live voice that helps children learn about what it means. It is school responsibility to keep staff and student protect and not that individual teachers. If all teachers were forced to carry concealed weapons, then this would deter many people from choosing teacher as a career. They want to educate children, no. They want to educate children and help them to become well-rounded, mutual and individual. Working hard to gain the relevant teacher qualification will no longer be enough. They will have to undergo, undergo. Uh, okay. <laughs> As you have stated, you're saying that weapons would silence the voice of students, am I correct? Yeah. There's one problem with this. We are proposing an idea that has been already started in Utah, which I've stated just now. And since there is an obvious monthly checkups, if something like this happens, if a student feels threatened, or even a case where a teacher would use this non-lethal concealed weapon against a child, they will get banned almost immediately from using a weapon ever again. Uh -huh. So how can we say that it really silences the voices of students? Um, do you mean after having the students or? Even before. <laughs> okay, thanks. So. My next point is, teachers are they to focus on teach our children. They are not trained to deal with extremely violent crimes. And they should not have to be. We need to stand up and say we will not put up this and we don't have to. We need to push to make our school safe for our children. But arming teachers is not the way. However, if school want to arm, they need to hire people that have a strong background with weapons such as armed security officers or military personnel. Those who have experience are and trained to deal with dangerous situations are more likely to handle the problem quicker and more effectively than a person with no history knowledge in a dangerous situation such as this. So we don't need more guns in school. We need more empathy and conversations. We need to keep guns out of the hands for our future criminals, our main priority in order to prevent these tragedies in the first place. Our first reaction not to should not to be meet by violence and violence and fire and fire. Fire with fire. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, can I ask the audience to keep quiet especially the one behind? Okay. Uh, can I now invite the third speaker from the government team? A very good afternoon to the Honourable Judge, Timekeeper, for members of the audience, opposition team, and my government team. Today, as the third speaker for government side, we strongly believe that we should arm teachers. As so, I would like to emphasize on a point that this will benefit children's safety. But before that, I would like to rebut the second speaker from government side. You have said that we are forcing teachers Actually, what we said is not forcing all teachers. We are choosing selected teachers that undergo training of, on use of arms. Okay, So it's not using firearms or guns. Yes, please. It's on selective teachers, right? Yeah. What if, during an outbreak, that selected teacher was not in the classroom? Then, what would happen? That's why that, there won't be only one selected teacher, you see. There'll be more than one, obviously. More I have a case, and I'll show it to you later. Okay, on to it for my point. Shootings in schools not only happens in the United States, 
but it also happens around the world. On December 6, 1989 in Montreal, Quebec, 25-year-old Mark Lepine, armed with a legally obtained semi-automatic rifle and a hunting knife, embarked on a shooting spree throughout the E. coli Polytechnic School, killing 14 women and injuring 10 other women and four men before killing himself. On February 3 this year, in Moscow, Russia, high school student Sergei Gordiev, armed with two rifles, forced his way past the security guard, took hostages and killed his geography teacher. I guess he must have really hated geography. <laughs> he then killed a police officer and wounded, and wounded another who arrived at the scene. There were even school shootings in the 1760s. On July 26, 1764, four American Indians entered a schoolhouse near present-day Greencastle, Pennsylvania, shot and killed the schoolmaster, Enoch Brown, and killed 9 to 10 children. Only three children survived. Reports of school shootings have since been ever-increasing. We have to do something now to prevent this ever-growing problem from happening again and again. So, if school teachers were permitted, permitted to carry arms, they would guarantee greater protection for children. Incidents in recent years, such as the massacre at Columbine High School on April 20th, 1999, have proven that a significant risk exists in schools where anyone can just walk in and start shooting at students. The carnage could have been prevented if the teachers present had been able to defend themselves and the children in their care, as teachers will be able to act as the first line of defense. We cannot solely rely on the police force, as not all schools are located near a police station. For example, places like Harrell County in Texas has a sheriff's office 17 miles away, and unlike more urban areas, they cannot afford to hire district police officers. Shootings in schools are happening more and more. Do you know that one happened recently? I'm sure you don't. In Seattle, on June 5, 2014, a man wielding a shotgun armed with a knife went on a killing rampage at a small Christian university. In the afternoon, injuring four people, a student at a university fired pepper spray at a suspect as he reloaded his shotgun at about 3.20 p.m. The student then pinned down the suspect. With the help of other students, the suspect was restrained until police arrived. Doesn't this story stress the need that we need to arm teachers? If one or more of the teachers was carrying arms, none of the students would be injured or dead. The hero of the shooting, John Mace, wasn't allowed to carry pepper spray, but he still did, just in case for emergencies like this. But the important part really isn't how John was armed. The important part is that he was brave enough to run towards danger. He was brave, courageous, and heroic. He saved many lives. Would he have done that without any weapon at all? He may have. Fortunately, we did not have to find out. In conclusion, we, the government team, strongly believe that we should arm teachers. And the saying goes, prevention is better than cure. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I invite the Speaker from the opposition team? Okay, hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm, well, before I begin, I would like to rebut a few things for the first speaker. You said that in your first case, the armed suspect was able to kill the policeman. Well, if even policemen died to the armed suspect, what chance does teachers with armed have? And next, you, you said that. Okay. Even if we are armed, at least we can save more lives than all of them dying, you see. You better, you rather be armed than not armed, right? Well, in none of the cases, everyone died. <laughs> so next, you say that it's safer for the teacher to have a gun to fight the armed person, right? Well, um, they might when they start to when they start the gun fight, they might the, the students might get in the crossfire. Hmm? Or the, the the students might get in the crossfire. And then might injure even more students. Okay, so now I would like to begin my point. Allowing teachers to carry firearms in school could mean that very young children could easily, could easily be acclimatized to the idea that carrying a gun and usage of gun is okay. Can we really prevent incidents like Colombian Thai massacre from happening by teaching children about the potential destructive and fatal consequences? of gun usage. 
for elementary school age children, it would be difficult to separate the idea that it's okay for a teacher to carry arms, but not for everyone else. Other than that, children can get their hand on almost everything. Based on an under-publicized study that appeared in the journal Project in 2011, when 29 groups of two to three boys, all aged around 10, are placed in a room that has a one-way mirror and told to wait, with two water guns and a .38 caliber handgun that was rigged to make the sound of discharge if the trigger was pulled with sufficient force. Both I mean, three of the guns were partially concealed in various locations in the room. 48 out of the 36 out of the 34 boys found the handgun. 30 boys handled the gun. 16 boys pulled the trigger. Approximately half of the boys who found the gun thought it was a toy or were unsure if it was real. 90% of the boys who handled the gun or pulled the trigger has previously received some sort of gun safety education. Furthermore, the FBI homicide data indicates that of the 1,448 children who died as a result of gun violence in 2010, 65 of those deaths were in the hands of children. So now we know that even if the children tries to hide the gun in the classroom, children will eventually find out where it is and most likely to misuse it. Besides that, arming a teacher with a gun would be very costly. For example, a G-Lock handgun will cost around $550 and 40 rounds of uh, self-defense mechanism will cost around $46. That adds up to about $571 for each teacher who will be armed. Do note that all of the prices above are listed in US dollars and not in Malaysia or Indian. And before arming the teachers, the government would have to spend a large amount of money to give the teachers a proper gun lesson and training so they can be qualified to build such firearm. Lastly, if the teachers is allowed to be armed in schools, it might change the mindset of the children from the school. For example, um, okay, um, both things are now given 1.5 minutes for you to come with your concluding speech.
speaker itself, is our definition today is we would arm teachers with non-lethal weapons and concealed. You said, first speaker said that violence in US is three times the rate of Malaysia, right? At least US is taking action. What are we doing? Guns? Why do you keep saying guns? We have already said non-lethal weapons. Nothing about guns. No firearms. That is what you guys need to get. You said giving them anything can also make them like, let's 